Green is from EIF, European Investment Fund. Not all of you might know it, but I think it's quite uh, the role that they're playing in, in uh, the European fund ecosystem is quite, and entrepreneurial system is quite uh, interesting and impactful. And you have a couple of slides, I think, that show uh, the impact of EIF. Let's see if you have a slide. So, uh, hello everyone. Good evening. So, we're great to meet you all. So, uh, it's good to see that you know, the weather is great and uh, it's all positive good. So, my name is Praveen Paranjyoti. So, I'm with the European Investment Fund. So, uh, we are an European institution focused on entrepreneurship and innovation in Europe. So, we set up 20 years ago part of the EIB Group, the European Investment Bank, to to basically build a sustainable entrepreneurship ecosystem in Europe. So how we do that uh, is essentially why this. We don't invest directly in companies, we invest in investors who invest in companies. So that's how we do that. So that we are what is called a LP, a limited partner. So so far we have backed more than 300 venture capital funds. We have more than 4,000 portfolio companies uh, across all the segments, ICT, early stage, growth stage, and life science, you name it, we have it. We've invested more than 5 billion euros uh, of equity capital in the market. Last year we invested a billion and a half across about roughly about 35 funds. So if you consider the European market, it's around 6 to 7 billion that's uh, raised every year. So a billion and a half goes from Luxembourg where we invest from these funds. So we're usually a cornerstone investor in most of these funds. So we're very delighted to be here. So we also involved in some of the initiatives in Bulgaria. So some of you might be aware of uh, Levin, Launcher, and Blackbeak, etc. So these type of investment arms and accelerators in Bulgaria. So we're very happy to be here. So that's us, the European Investment Fund. And uh, what we see is basically across all the stages. We invest across all the stages from the very early stage to work with business in Europe to really growth stage venture capital funds. So that's EIF in a nutshell. Okay, great. Um, looking forward, uh, as EIF, you are investing and the fund to fund strategy. What are the key trends? At this moment, if you look at domains that are uh, taking your attention, what are you looking at? Yeah, so you know, it's always a uh, sort of cycle, right? So uh, there are different aspects we look at. One is about the stage of investment. So in some of the markets, the early stage, there is a gap. In some of the markets, there is a later stage gap. Overall, you know, our scope is the European geography. So within this European geography, what we see is uh, in, we are seeing bigger funds. So coming in the market, it's never happened before that we have half a billion and a one billion dollar fund in Europe. So we back many of those funds, including Atomico, Rocket Internet, and Equity Ventures, roughly half a billion in all of these funds. So we see these guys moving much larger uh, fund investment or investments into companies. So then that, that creates a little bit of an early stage opportunity. So we will see new fund managers coming up. So that's just something that we like. We like to back new fund managers if they bring in the right ingredients into the picture. So that's generally the market trend. But however, we also focus on the policy impact. Like we would like to develop the ecosystem in markets like Central Eastern Europe, in Bulgaria, and so on. So where we would like to bring in more new fund, type, fund managers into the picture, mostly focused on early stage because the latest stage capital comes once the ecosystem produces a number of uh, opportunities in this, in this space. So, so overall, you know, that's the sort of the stage aspect of it. From the sector aspect of it, right, you know, we saw a space, we started to see some space opportunities come on the market. And based on our last number, last number is sort of taking the lead in the European market for that. So uh, we're, we're seeing some new segments. So cyber security is an important element uh, that we see. Fintech is certainly has taken off. You know, four years ago we looked at a number of funds in fintech. We said, hmm, there's opportunity there right now, but it's clearly an opportunity for us now. So we're backing some specialized fund tech managers and SaaS platforms. So consumer is getting a bit off trend right now. Uh, we're seeing more B2B opportunities. We're seeing more SaaS, cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, and space. We haven't yet figured out where the opportunity is, especially in terms of the fund model, but something that is. So that's really the, from the sector of us what we're going to see. Okay, great, thanks. Um, next, we're going to make a bridge from the, to the more uh, local ecosystem. I'm already going to say now so you can start thinking. Uh, there wasn't a lot of time before to ask questions, but after this presentation, I'll already uh, ask you if you have questions. So, can be on either side, we'll uh, open the floor from the beginning. Uh, uh, Stan, maybe uh, it would be great to uh, introduce and tell us. Thank you, Bart. Uh, my name is uh, Stan Daniele. Uh, I'm the executive director of the Disability Agency. Uh, but first of all, I would like to thank 
this orchestra and uh, the conductor for the good start, for the good start up, uh, in a way, for our speeches, because that's uh, basically the music from my favorite uh, movie, or one of my favorite movies, Star Wars. And obviously, this is uh, the episode about uh, the new home. Like, the new home, like home that uh, comes from the Invisible Gay Agency, in a way. Uh, as a person who comes from uh, the private sector, uh, being uh, for more than 10 years uh, M&A lawyer and uh, doing some uh, uh, deals with venture capitals, private equity, but, uh, obviously a person, uh, person who is um, into the innovations and startups. And uh, I have, uh, uh, for the last few years as executive uh, director of Investable Gay Agency wanted to raise the profile of this agency uh, and not to be uh, something which uh, operates uh, uh, in, in a traditional administrative way. We started uh, to talk about uh, entrepreneurial or entrepreneurship in the government uh, segment and uh, uh, let me, uh, I, my new hope is that uh, um, I am uh, not a person who is uh, put into the frames of uh, the political uh, position. And that's why probably I'll take off my tie right now and try to be uh, close to my fellow uh, distinguished uh, speakers. Uh, to feel, uh, uh, this is not uh, the other movie uh, which is probably uh, what, uh, nine, uh, nine and a half weeks or something like that. Uh, uh, just uh, uh, because I'm, I feel grilled uh, uh, here. And, uh, uh, you know, always uh, this, uh, the public sector is grilled by the private sector, but uh, I see it from all this as, uh, uh, in a way, uh, platform for being partners and uh, to uh, cooperate together in the area of innovation and startups, this means uh, entrepreneurship. Uh, I was talking too much about uh, this kind of uh, stuff, uh, but uh, I would like to close with uh, uh, two things. Basically, uh, in this Bulgarian agency has two main activities. Uh, one of them is to promote Bulgaria as an attractive place for investments. Uh, this means also uh, startups, innovations, and uh, possibilities to uh, basically uh, to be recognized as the regional help uh, for innovations and I am uh, following a formula that uh, leadership equals innovation and investment. So from that perspective, I do believe that uh, Bulgaria is the right place uh, for people to invest and to invest in innovation. That's the right moment and uh, when the, these people come to Bulgaria, we can support them and we can support them to uh, different uh, ways uh, to uh, supporting them and putting them in you know, the right people, finding funds, uh, finding ways to execute and implement their ideas. So uh, I would like to stop here and to probably uh, take some questions or... Okay. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I think that if I look from entrepreneurial perspective and, and, and what you say, if a couple of years ago you would ask an entrepreneur or somebody who's doing innovation, uh, what can the government or, or what can Europe do for you? Uh, mostly the, the, the answer would be uh, uh, just get out of the way. Uh, that used to be like that. And you see that there's a shifting attitude. Uh, very often, uh, and look at probably the most famous entrepreneur in the world is Elon Musk. Uh, without government, uh, nor Tesla, nor SpaceX would exist anymore. Uh, many funds would not be there anymore. Taking that even a step further, do you think something like entrepreneurial government is possible? Uh, from my perspective, uh, I would like to be seen as uh, the visualized definition of uh, this term uh, entrepreneurial government. Because uh, I told you that uh, we have uh, limited competencies. We can uh, support investors provided they cover certain thresholds for the investments. 
otherwise we do not uh, uh, support, which is uh, from my perspective nonsense. And that's why uh, uh, my idea was to be uh, always on the field to support uh, any type of investment. Uh, as uh, in, uh, my position uh, requires also to be part of uh, uh, steering our management body of uh, national innovation fund where obviously there is an opportunity to support uh, 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 and provide funds for uh, interesting uh, new and innovative ideas. So uh, uh, that's uh, obviously also one of the fields to uh, somehow uh, uh, make a difference and uh, try to attract uh, investors. Because when you have for uh, for good uh, startup projects, you can put it on the table and easily it can uh, attract the, uh, uh, It is like going to the market. Uh, 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 come to my shop, uh, you can find anything. But uh, what else uh, uh, if uh, you give specific products that uh, you can buy? Of course, uh, you can stop and try to choose one. So uh, that's uh, kind of uh, the approach uh, we would like to uh, share and uh, implement and uh, we are doing this. Perfect. Uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, from the, your question is, uh, is entrepreneurial development possible? So meaning with uh, you know, less bureaucracy and more to the home market, as close to the market as possible, right? So we are a public institution. Uh, we pride ourselves as to be as close uh, or even sometimes much more stringent in terms of our requirements for investment compared to the private investor. We don't ask anything specific in terms of uh, what we look for in investments. We invest like a private investor. So we are not a guarantee or we are not a grant giving organization, we are not a subsidy organization. We, we do expect financial returns. We also look to see uh, public impact or policy impact. So what we say is that uh, we don't maximize returns, we optimize returns and then we uh, obviously make a policy impact. So what that means to us is, you know, we are constantly, I have to say that among all the institutions that have come from those of sister institutions globally, from Asia to the US to Canada, so we have probably the least bureaucratic, but there is certainly bureaucracy. I think overall, generally speaking, there's a long way to go. Uh, but certainly what we also see is technology is becoming an enabler for us to make that happen. So we have been implementing a lot of, you know, for us, we have been sitting on a huge amount of data, for example, and we haven't had an opportunity to sort of use the data in many ways. Now we're starting to use more and more, and also we're starting to share more and more. For the first time in our history, the VC report came out. You know, for us, even for someone on the team, something this is a great initiative uh, coming out of the So generally speaking, I think it is possible, and technology is going to be a huge enabler in making this happen. And we are trying to also make use of that as much as possible, but I think it's still a long way to go. I think uh, it's uh, very important to understand the strategy of the mining. Mining must have strategies. So, the government, public money, they should support agendas. You know, government, a country, they need to have agenda, they need money. I can't feel it. Usually, they say, ah, we do things, but in the end, we are not a real agenda where the country put the money somehow to say we want to become this one. So it's very important. Then we have the fund with the venture capital. So that money need to generate a profit. And then we have the money that comes from corporates because it's a number for money. And that money need to create market. So they put money through the R D or acquisition or whatever, but it's to improve, you know, to or whatever. So that's the three main flow. It's for entrepreneurs to understand and how those money goes. It's a, I think government and the public institutions, uh, they are very important because they can do an agenda and they can give the money. Some can go for infrastructure or to support some other companies in larger transformations or, or whatever. But it's basically to have an agenda. And that's take space for entrepreneurs, maybe not in that direct way like uh, the venture capital can do it. Because the VC uh, knows very well the space, he has the money, but he needs to, the mission of the venture capital is to get money back to the investor. It's a uh, 
private equity helps to grow and so on. So this is very clear in my opinion. It has to be very clear also for entrepreneurs to know and understand the struggle is how the money goes. Because money is around for greater money. Well, it's, it's an important point if I may add to that. You know, what is talking. So the public money, you know, there's a general misconception or misperception that if it's public money, I should get it, right? So, but I think you know our whole philosophy is that uh, we want to build a sustainable ecosystem. What does it mean? It means the circle of investing and getting the money back, hopefully with profit, should work efficiently. So that's what it means. So when I invest, you know, in a venture fund, and the venture fund invests into a startup, the startup should be able to grow bigger and, and basically give the money back to the venture fund and eventually to us. This is what we call as a sustainable ecosystem. So what our philosophy is that we want to back the best investors out there in the market and then the best investors typically tend to back the best companies out there in the market and that's how we want to build a sustainable ecosystem and that's worked for us in the last 20 years uh, fairly well I would say and uh, you know see the, the risk of self-appreciation so I have to say that uh, this is the right model for Europe even for public money so you know, we need to have a sustainable ecosystem yes there's not going to be any money coming and it's going to be a racket for money being lost, lost in the market which is not going to build a sustainable ecosystem we learn, we learn just by doing it, exactly so we do it, because we always had issues to have money, because we started with our own money, and then after a couple of years, we learned, we said, oh, to do startup, it took some way to incubate startup, because the first five companies we did, we just invented. So 2005, we say, who comes knock the door startup? The world startup was existing, was pronounced on the Silicon Valley, the United States, and all, of course, the young spirit of Venice. So we we come from uh, let's say a scarcity of money for the start, okay? But you know, it's plenty of money. So and we learn. And today in the in the in the world, what we're doing? Example, we are investing only into the extension of the infrastructure, over 100 million euro. It has come from the largest institutional infrastructure fund and by an insurance company. So they understood the mission and the value of everything. They say, there is a hundred billion. It's not a DC that comes to buy the real estate for hundred million. So they say, no, we do that. Because we're going to put the school, because we're going to put the startup. The, 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 the startup has money from angels, venture capital, which works is up to the quality of the startup. We have few startups that they have VC back because they're very good. Others are just, but we also have a close to 40 million dollar, 40, 40 million uh, euro in revenues of business generated by corporates to buy business from startup and from innovation. So it's if we consider, we invested 25 million in startup, we invested 25 million in getting acquisition and creating structure, 100 million of. And all those investments, and, then, and we have two companies that probably the overall business will generate from, from the country. It's over 60 million in just selling innovation. So if you're gonna see all those money, it's it's not bad, you know. It is coming from some corporates, from investors, or from, from the government, but there's different strategies. If you understand this, you can make big things. So you know, data is something that is uh, Across all verticals, we see it as a more horizontal that's relevant for every single, uh, you know, every single sector out there in the market. Uh, the way that we work is, you know, we are demand driven in a sense. So uh, essentially, we would like to have uh, investment proposals come with a specific focus area. And what we see in almost all of our funds right now is a clear recognition that data is important in what they're building. Yeah? So uh, a lot of these early stage companies are still not generating revenues but still that they are generating data. And this is what they aim it to be, the, you know, the, the future revenues. So I think the, the data is very much more powerful what you're looking at. We, we have somebody in the, uh, in the audience who might give a comment. Would you care to, uh, to comment? Yeah, first of all, it's a brilliant discussion. Thank you so much. Um, the, the thing is that cybersecurity is the other side of the coin of every other technology. So if you have IoT, you have cybersecurity for IoT. If you have big data, you have cybersecurity for big data. So for each and every one of those amazing trends, they represent both great opportunities and great problems. And I think you will see investments in those startups uh, as well. And what, what place can Europe take in that? 
if you look at the European, European ecosystem in that domain. So I think Europe is an amazing place to become, uh, um, I don't want to say the world leader in innovation, because in some ways Europe is already the world leader in innovation, in some, in some ways. Um, um, but the thing is that for many startups, the United States have a problem, that the United States think that they are the world. Europe has a much more open perspective towards the world because of the way it is structured. I think that if, uh, um, if you will find a better way, and I'm coming from Israel, right? So, uh, and we're not a big market, so we are always looking to Europe and the United States. If you will find a way to give opportunities to small startups, which is probably one of the hardest things for us to find the first customers. If you will find a way to facilitate that, to give a lot of opportunities, risk opportunities to startups, I think that in a very short time Europe will become the first uh, place that startups from outside of Europe will come to. I'm very surprised you didn't think this was the United States. Uh, I think there's a lot to be said for it. Uh, I, I'm, it's something I do aside, but there is a, a, a media organization that's active in health countries called Directive. You have Directive and uh, Political and the Chairman of Directive. And what I find when I look at it is that there's, I only do it for a couple of months and I used to live in Silicon Valley and I moved back. I think there's an incredible lack of confidence of what Europe can do and to have a pro European voice in it. And that's one of the things that I'm, I'm going to try to implement in Directive because these kind of media approaches can give a lot of attention and can bring it forward. I think it has a lot to do with, with confidence. When I, when I lived in, in LA and when I lived in Silicon Valley, all these youngsters there thought that it was a center and they were so confident also because they were supported by the entire ecosystem of it. We're in Europe, we're sometimes a little bit skeptical. And, and, uh, and if you look at it, you have, they have Kava and Google and Amazon and Facebook and the other side uh, from China, we have uh, Tencent and we have Baidu and we have uh, uh, Alibaba coming and, and what is Europe? But if you then look at what Europe is doing, there's a lot of innovation that we could apply also to traditional economies and we can build an ecosystem between corporates and startups. And that brings me a little bit to a theme that you talked about uh, when we uh, talked over the phone is that maybe Europe should be a platform. Yeah, that's a... Uh... I like to see things from a platform perspective because it's a, it's a good way where you can have kind of you know interaction. And it's how the technology is succeeding because all these successful companies recently uh, founded are for platform companies. And Europe need to find its own driver. I think the transformation so Europe what is Europe? Europe is a history is country. And the diversity. If we consider Europe at large, so Western plus the Eastern Bloc connected, and forget about all Brexit and political issues, but let's consider on a business. Or, so Europe is uh, the diversity is a huge value um, heritage. Uh, if we're gonna put the leaves, there is a lot of money, there is a lot of research, there is a lot of science, but the density. It's completely different when we consider the high-tech industry. We usually going to think the Silicon Valley because or Israel, those two places, is everything is about it's like a juice, you know, it's a technology juice. So everything is about technology. So it's very it's very simple. And over the past two decades, all tech companies were like addressing technology for the high-tech industry. So what I see in the future is just looking like Tesla is an example. And uh, Many others, Airbnb or Uber, they're jumping to the service, they are getting more into the society, they are getting more into our day life. So that's where Europe should now find its own way, but to say, what is the deal of Europe? It's a transformation. Europe is made by, is built on low tech, traditional, established companies, big, small corporates, and they will be uh, involved with a change, with a big change. I believe that just looking like Sony and Philips, they used to be the giant in the past, they're still surviving, they're still there. They're no more the top five or ten brands because Google, Facebook, they replaced, but they're still there. Uh, but others like Kodak or other institutional you know, companies that have been 
around for 30, 40 years, completely disappear. It is what will happen. So, the downside of Europe is uh, the confidence and the speed. Because the technology goes very, very, very fast. It is why we have to invest and we have to push and encourage the young people, the next generation, because they are ready. They are naturally involved with the technology. And we have to believe it. This is what happened in Israel and in the United States much more than in Europe. If, if you look so at this is the challenge, you know, because uh, that's what I see. If you look at uh, investments, because that, that's part of uh, scaling the companies and, and making the large one, something that I find interesting when I was in the US is that there's new initiatives uh, on the like, bottom side, uh, the white combinator at the time, or, or five on the startups, or Andreessa Horowitz. So it's often first time fund manager who have a different kind of experience and who made a difference in, in thinking and in supporting it. Is that something that, that's yeah, would be open for. Is that something that can work in Europe as well? Yeah. I mean, it's it's a it's a very challenging question, you know. And generally speaking, because uh, you know everybody wants to create a Silicon Valley in Europe, uh, but that's simply you know it's not applicable because you know to create a Silicon Valley in Europe, it's also going to be challenging. It's not necessarily a European challenge. Um, in general, I think uh, there are several aspects to it. When a, fund, a venture fund manager is raising money. For a different institutional players, you need to fit into several boxes because that's how we come into our investors to say that this is what we are going to invest in. Yeah, so that's number one. And then there is the element of innovation involved uh, within the venture community to say that what's the extent innovation that we can give. Ultimately, I think the core point is if anybody can drive returns, there is money in the market. So that's the basic fundamental, right? And then the second point is that okay, so. You have an opportunity to drive the money. You know, what type of model are we going to build for this? And uh, and then is that the market opportunity is basically that something is out there in terms of what you're building, right? These are the two things that we look for. And in general, within a framework, a larger framework of our commitment to our investors, we are generally open for innovation. So having said that, you know the VC industry has not been innovative since its start. It's always a 10-year model plus extensions. And then we, we, we have many of the funds in our portfolio that is you know, going into the 15th year and has not returned the complete capital yet. So, so the challenge for the European venture ecosystem is that uh, returns, and for to derive returns, you need to have big successes, and the big successes are starting to come for us. You know? So maybe I can show a slide, you know, in our portfolio, not only in our portfolio, but generally in Europe. So you can see in 2016 there has been this 100 million plus exits. This is for us very important, uh, you know, because these are the ones that sort of drives the bigger returns for our funds. And then obviously this goes into the IPOs uh, or M&A. And then you have, uh, you know, essentially 100 million dollar plus fundraising. A number of these are portfolio companies. This is important because, of course, if you're raising 100 million, the guys who are investing at this stage wants to have double the triple of money, so you need to have still have a growth potential, right? So this is what that shows. And then these portfolio companies are, are doing well, and this is something that's for us giving us much more, right? So when you see 2005, the billion dollar companies are really a handful in Europe, and now you see the crowd uh, in the companies in 2015, and we're very proud that a number of them is back from the five portfolio companies. So these are the things that you know show us greater confidence that we can take to the investors to innovate, which we do as much as we could. You know, we work with a business angel, which is something as an institutional player we never thought that we could, because it's smaller tickets. We invest very big tickets, typically into the funds. And then you see that uh, in terms of the returns, also it's coming up. So the returns are so the returns, if you can see in the in the top 10, in the early ranges, this is very very important for us, right? So you see that the minimum net RR is 17 which is pretty good rhythm. This is something that we used to pitch to our investors. Listen, there is opportunity in the European market to check out financial returns. Right? So this is uh, an important data for us. And then if you look at the next one, we also back new fund managers. So it's always a question that if you go to an institutional player to say that, okay, I want to raise funds, so what's your track record? So that's an important question. And for new fund managers, it's always difficult to demonstrate as a team. But in, here is a case for us, and if you see in the 2015 vintage, the dark green are the new fund managers. So all of the top five funds, top three are new. For us, this makes the case. So these are sort of, you know, we still tend to think it's really different in thinking, 
in terms of our cohorts of institutional investors, then these are some of the innovations that we do. So, but entrepreneurs also have to carry the weight, right? I mean, what I see is a Spotify you know, as really, for example, what uh, Apple Music is successfully so far, and it has proven its worth it, right? So, and then we see that hopefully that will become a much bigger company than it is today. We also have to see many of the European entrepreneurs come up with the barrier to fight the big guys out there. And then think different, not just the US is a market, you know, one third of the market is in Asia. How many of the European players are active in Asia? Not many. Yeah, so there's a lot of opportunities that's not been taken over by Europe, right? And these are opportunities that we would love to see that's been addressed by different players in the market. Yeah? I think. Um, we talk a lot about the European ecosystem and it was, uh, it was really great to see the, the conference here, but also the, the president, the former president, the mayor, so many people behind. Uh, the stimulation of innovation, entrepreneurship, and the positioning of, of Sofia. Could you tell me, in this European ecosystem, how could, how will Bulgaria or Sofia specifically position itself? What's what's going to be the, the message to attract people? Well, from uh, what uh, I've heard, uh, we cannot uh, basically step away from uh, the global uh, processes. Uh, obviously, uh, America is uh, quite ahead because uh, the whole uh, system, uh, the whole country was created on the basis that the fastest will survive. And I now remember a long story that uh, in Africa, uh, a gazelle uh, wakes up uh, every morning and uh, is uh, thinking that uh, it must uh, run over the fastest line. Same with the lion, he must uh, run over uh, the gazelle, uh, the fastest gazelle, otherwise uh, he will not uh, have uh, food to eat and he will not survive. Uh, but if I ask here uh, who would like to be an entrepreneur, probably if, uh, more than 80% of the people here would say I would like to be an entrepreneur. But uh, this means that uh, you have to be a very good storyteller which obviously is the case even with the institutions. Uh, and, uh, you have to have a courage to be fast uh, in a way. Uh, uh, it is a marathon running, so you have to do it. From that perspective, uh, I can easily position uh, uh, Sofia and Bulgaria uh, in that uh, kind of situation. And uh, we see that uh, uh, Sofia is considered uh, or ranked uh, place is a startup uh, capital after London and uh, uh, Berlin. Probably after the Brexit we can imagine uh, that we're a second. So uh, 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 obviously there are people, talented people with courage, with good stories uh, uh, which could uh, support the ideas. And uh, from that perspective uh, I would say that uh, even uh, from uh, the public sector should uh, focus and try to stimulate uh, these people, uh, obviously not only through uh, different uh, uh, tools uh, like the National Innovation Fund, uh, but we also have uh, certain uh, uh, instruments through the uh, operational programs of uh, EU, uh, the, uh, the specific program innovation competitiveness is also under the umbrella of the Ministry of Economy in Bulgaria. And uh, I would say that uh, it, uh, everything relies on us. Uh, uh, we cannot uh, just sit that uh, people must uh, go out there and run. Uh, as, uh, uh, they should uh, run and fight for their ideas. And, uh, I have a question for you. So, you know, obviously, you know, from the investment area, so uh, you're looking at all kinds of industries, right? So, uh, how important is the technology and innovation industry across the board? Uh, well, uh, unfortunately, we cannot look at uh, all kinds of industries. Uh, and, uh, Probably that was uh, the main goal of uh, the government when uh, at the end of 2015 uh, we uh, adopted the uh, innovative strategy for smart specialization. And uh, uh, technology is one of the key sectors and elements of uh, our economy. Uh, it is 
and uh, on the basis of this, uh, even for um, uh, innovations in your segment, uh, we can talk uh, that uh, uh, just uh, again one uh, short story. The will was created, that's the last thing, the will was created uh, 5,000 years before Christ. And this, the same will, it was put in the suitcases in 1981. And this is innovation. So from that perspective, we can uh, always speak about constant innovation. It is a process. Every day you should uh, fight for uh, this. And there is no finish line in this case. And maybe to, uh, to finalize this kind of something, and it's uh, every country has a specific, but something that we did in Belgium that was coming from another country to do that exactly, which is more uh, how do you fund? Because at the end, everybody is going to invest, going to say, well, the difference is going to be made by human capital, by people. That is the founder that pull you through the different, uh, the, the difficult stages. And I think it's for a large fund difficult to invest in a lot of them, but what you can do on a local level, what we did is um, all the research and all the entrepreneurial activity of all the universities in Belgium, so there's eight of them, were regrouped into one organization, and that organization invests into uh, students, uh, uh, so that the first, uh, it's per tranche of 50k, and then there's an additional funding from 200,000 uh, per startup, and that we combine with a couple of fiscal incentives. So there's also, uh, based on crowdfunding and based on angel investing, if you invest in those companies, 50% of the investment is tax deductible. So that means that, and it's about 60 companies per year that we funded, like it's company calls and organizational guidelines. The last year was the chairman of for five years. And what we did is we went from three or four investment in student communities per year to nearly 50 in student communities with follow up investment or by having a fiscal incentive so that, and if it goes a little bit to, uh, to what uh, being said is, at a certain moment, if you have a great idea and, and, uh, and you have the will to do it, the internet is great because you can promote your ID. I've, I've seen very few IDs that, if they have their initial funding, that cannot do the follow-up funding. Because there's the internet, there's the communication, there's crowdfunding that's getting to it. So I think there's the initial feeling that you can do, and then you see the great entrepreneurs standing up. But I agree, the initial funding can be done from a more institutional